when people are born in this world, we assume they have all the basic rights and they can live with dignity and respect. This is not always the case. We see in television or read in newspaper, many people are displaced from their country for various reasons. Nobody wants to be displaced and become refugee. A refugee is a person who is forcefully evicted from their country. There are nearly 21.3 million refugees in the world, and I was one of them. A total of 74,602 refugees were admitted to United States in 2009, and I was one of them. My early life was defined as statelessness or act of denied citizenship. Bhutan is a small Himalayan kingdom between India and China. My parents and I were born in Bhutan. Bhutan is a multicultural country whose people speak varieties of languages. It was a place of tranquility until the mid of 1980s. The government's adaptation of one nation, one people policy displaced more than 100,000 ethnic Nepalis who have different language, culture, and tradition than ruling Buddhist elite. The implementation of this policy took all our fundamental rights as citizens. Under this policy, we have to give up everything that has meaning to us. This was devastating for me. My family and all the ethnic Nepalis who have been there for generations. This happens to the picture of king and queen of Bhutan. They say Bhutan is a happiness country in the world, but it was not happy for the ethnic Nepalis who were forced to leave at gone point. This is a picture of my parents in Nepali cultural dress. My father was a teacher. One day he went to job and did not return. We thought either he was killed, kidnapped, or arrested by the government of Bhutan. It was very common during that time. On the same day, my sister and I were also expelled from school. I still remember that day when the principal came and told us to go home from the middle of the class and ask us neighbor, to never return to school. After a couple of months, one of the released prisoners reported that he saw my father in prison in Thimpu, the capital city of Bhutan. He was arrested and imprisoned for nine months without any cause or warrant. He was tortured very badly. He still has some healed scars in his body. The dark day did not end there. My father appealed to the Department of Education for the restatement of this job. Unfortunately, government labeled him as anti-national and considered him non bhutanese Furthermore, government warned, we have no rights to ask anything or questions the government. We were shocked by the treatment of our own government. We are made homeless, jobless, and stateless. Our citizenship was revoked and soldiers were deployed to the village. We thought our dad would be arrested again, sentenced to life in prison, or will be killed, or my mother or sister may be raped. It was at this time my parents made a decision that would forever change our life. To ensure the safety, they decided to leave the country that means so much to us. In a desperate attempt to save our life, we fled Bhutan on the dawn of September 1992. Our family spent the next 17 years in refugee camp in Nepal with other 100,000 Bhutanese Nepali who were in the same desperate situation. When I see this picture, it makes me cry. This family picture was taken just before we left the country. I am in the middle in a foster. I was not sure whether we'll be able to see our fr friends or family 
there was a likelihood we might be killed. So we decided to give this picture to our dear and near ones in case wars happen, they will remember us by looking at this picture. This is the refugee camp where I grew up. Life in a refugee camp was very difficult. The hearts were made of a bamboo and roof was made of a plastic. When there was a strong wind, we need to secure it, otherwise it would be blown away by the wind. I remember in the beginning, there was no toilet. The surrounding forest was contaminated with feces and urine. When the wind blew, we could smell it and it was heartbreaking. There was no nutritious food for refugees. Many people were malnourished. I have witnessed so many deaths, including the death of children. These experiences and untold miseries toughened me and inspired me to, carry, to pursue a career in healthcare and to provide a compassionate care to needy and less fortunate people. My father always taught me the value of education. He always says, education is the only the thing government of Bhutan did not snatch from him. My student life was different than what most of you had. When I started school, we used to sit under the tree and move sideways as the sun moved to protect from the intense heat. At night, we used to study under the kerosene lamp since we did not have the electricity. I never used a computer or never made a PowerPoint slide. I saw laptop and get acquainted with the internet after coming to US in September of 2009, long after many people in the world are using it. We were the forgotten people for last two decades. While living in refugee camp, we had no place to call our country. We did not have the citizenship. We discovered lack of citizenship limits the right of the people. Finally, after 17 years, United States and other country came with the option of third country resettlement. I was very excited when I learned that US is the land of opportunity. All refugees carry these bags in the airport that contains all that document which can lead to the freedom. If you see anybody in the airport carrying this bag, you know they are very excited and frightened and nervous to start a new life again. After coming to Syracuse, I started volunteering at Catholic Charity. I also volunteered to coordinate the ESL class for the adult goodness. The time of adjustment passed quickly. I kept busy with my schoolwork, community service, and job. In 2012, I married Kumari, my precious, lovely, and beautiful wife, who came to this country as a refugee in January of 2009. She's also a registered nurse and continuing her education to become nurse practitioner. We did something that most refugees do not get chance to do. We went to New England cruise for our honeymoon. <laughs> In 2015, we took the second cruise, however, it was further south to Bahamas. It was a very unique and enjoyable life experience. We never dream in million years we'll come to US and go to cruise. <laughs> we two formerly stateless people found ourselves in jet ski and parasailing through the air over the ocean. I'm so grateful and feel the need every day to give back to my community. Last year, my wife and I hosted a blood drive to educate the refugee communities about the importance of donating blood and saving the life of the people. We collected 26 pins of blood. One pin can save up to three lives. So we were able to save up to 78 lives. Working in the 
oncology floor, I see there is a terrible need for the blood. I know I have a power to help this little bit by increasing the awareness. We also did the breast cancer awareness program. This year, we'll be hosting another blood drive and we'll be doing a cancer awareness, skin cancer awareness program too. When I came to this country, everything was new. The culture was new, the food was new, environment was new. Many warm-hearted people helped us in so many ways and welcomed us. So this is the way we are giving back to the community and saying thank you for welcoming us. After four years and nine months, the earliest opportunity to do so, I was allowed to apply for US citizen. On September 26, 2014, at the age of 30, I went to the naturalization ceremony and took oath of this great country. Now I have a right that was once denied to me. I can vote, serve on jury, and fulfill my responsibilities as citizen, travel with the US passport, and run for office. After 30 years of struggle and suffering, I can proudly say I'm a citizen of this great country. Citizenship to me means my family and I, and especially my baby daughter, can live a life of dignity. For this, we'd be forever grateful. Thank you.